evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Lagos High Court sentences two directors of Ontario Oil and Gas to 10 years each for defrauding the federal government of 754 million naira in all subsidy transactions. Abuja High Court orders forfeiture of Malibu oil to the federal government pending the conclusion of trial of companies and individuals named in the money laundering case. United States Court mandates Senator Bruji Kashamu to face trial in a drug trafficking case that dates back to the 90s. And Gambia's President Adama Barrow returns to the country to resume power days after his predecessor, Yaya Jame, went into exile. On business news tonight, Nigeria's 2017 budget moves one step closer to becoming law as Senate passes the appropriation bill for second reading. And on sports news tonight, Swiss maestro Roger Federer on course to win his next major title after beating compatriot Stanislas Wawrinka in a five-set thriller at the Australian Open. And from Abuja, I am Ivy Penn. Fire at a petrol station in Abiyokuta, the Ogun State capital, leaves two dead and several others injured. Ten years, that's how long Mrs. Ada Ugo Nadi, Managing Director, and Walter Wagwasoma, Chairman of Ontario Oil and Gas, will spend in prison for defrauding the federal government of 754 million naira in oil subsidy transactions. Justice Latifa Okuno of the Lagos High Court, who gave the judgment in the five-year legal battle, also ordered that the money be returned to the federal government. Our correspondent, Victoria Idowu, reports. It all started in 2012 when the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission arraigned Mrs. Ada Ugo Nadi, Walter Wagwasoma, and Ontario Oil and Gas for fraud, forgery, and conspiracy amounting to 1.9 billion naira in fuel subsidy scam. They were later rearranged in 2013 after the trial judge was elevated to the Court of Appeal and then again in 2016 on an eight count amended charge. On the 13th of January, when Justice Latifa Dukuno of the Lagos High Court found the suspects guilty, proceedings were halted after Mrs. Ugo Nadi, the managing director of Ontario Oil and Gas, collapsed in the dock and was rushed to the hospital. <laughs> And now the trial that took five years comes to an end with the judge of the Lagos High Court, Justice Latifa Dukunu, handing down a sentence of 10 years to the convicts. Mr. Walter Wagbasuma, the chairman of the company, was convicted and sentenced in absentia. He is currently under house arrest in the United Kingdom where he's facing a separate charge of money laundering. The convicts have been found guilty on all six counts from conspiracy to obtaining by false pretense, conspiracy to commit forgery, forgery and altering of documents to a total of six and nine years in prison which will run concurrently. For the convicts company Ontario Oil and Gas, the judge made an order of restitution mandating the company to return 754 million naira to the Nigerian government. And with a sad and broken heart, Mrs. Ada Ugo Nadi was led to the waiting vehicle by prison officials. Angry relatives of the convicts were physically restrained from attacking a photojournalist working for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission who was trying to take photographs of the convict. The sentence is the first of its kind since massive oil subsidy fraud allegedly perpetrated by oil marketers was uncovered in the petroleum industry in 2012. Victoria Ido, reporting for Channels Television News. Staying with the courts, Justice John Soho of the Federal High Court has ordered entering for forfeiture of oil prospecting license 245, otherwise known as Malibu Oil. The order, according to him, will last pending the conclusion of investigation and prosecution of Shell Nigeria Ultra Deep Limited, Shell Nigeria Exploration and Production Company Limited, Nigerian Egypt Exploration Limited, Malibu Oil and Gas Limited and other individuals named in connection with the alleged conspiracy, bribery, official corruption and money laundering. Justice Soho, who gave the order, also ordered the Department of Petroleum Resources to manage the oil processing license 245 on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission told the court that it has taken the steps in the interest of the public 
in view of the crimes and fraud against the economic interests of the federal government. The EFCC had on December 20th, 2016, charged nine suspects, including former Minister of Justice Mohamed Adoke, with respect to the $1.1 billion scam. Other accused persons named in the charges filed by the EFCC include former Minister of Petroleum Dan Etete, businessman Aliou Abubakar, and Malibu Oil and Gas Limited. Meanwhile, a high court sitting in the United Kingdom has ruled that oil major Royal Dutch Shell cannot be sued in London courts over allegations of oil spill in Nigeria. Bile and Ogale communities in the oil-rich Niger Delta region had filed a case alleging oil spill against the company's subsidiary Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria in the British court. But the court today ruled that the suit did not establish that Shell, the parent company, and legal responsibility for SPDC's actions and that the claimants failed to demonstrate that the first threshold requirement that is a real issue between the claimant and the ANCO defendants is met. Observers say that if the High Court had ruled in favor of the two communities, other claimants against British-based multinationals could have been emboldened to pursue legal action through the British courts. Shell also denies responsibility for the spills, which it says were due to sabotage and illegal refining. In the meantime, Lay Day, a law firm representing the villagers, said it would appeal the ruling. A United States appeals court has upheld a ruling mandating Bruji Kashamu to face a drug trafficking trial. The ruling means that Kashamu can be extradited from Nigeria to the U.S. to answer the charges. The senator representing Ogun East constituency was alleged to have been the ringleader of a 90s heroin cartel in Chicago, United States. Kashamu had, in April 2015, asked a district court to put a hold on his abduction abroad by U.S. authorities. In its ruling, the U.S. court dismissed the complaint and upheld the ruling of the lower court. According to the court, the attempt by U.S. agents to arrest Kashamu in coordination with Nigerian authorities cannot be termed an attempted abduction. Although several persons indicted in the case had pleaded guilty, Kashamu has insisted that his dead brother has, was responsible for the crimes he is being accused of. Meanwhile, Senator Buruji Kashamu has been reacting to the U.S. court judgment upholding the ruling of a lower court mandating his trial for drug trafficking. In a statement, Senator Buruji says that the interpretation of the latest ruling which was based on a suit he instituted against his abduction to mean his possible extradition is unfounded, vexatious and malicious. He adds that he had faced two extradition proceedings in the United Kingdom at the instance of the United States and the British court, and it was found to be a case of mistaken identity after four years of trial. He described as unfortunate an attempt to twist a suit he filed in the U.S. to stop his abduction and forceful transportation to face trial for a case two British courts had adjudic adjudicated upon. In other news, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission today put before a federal high court sitting in Lagos more documents in proof of its case against the former Chief of Air Staff, retired Air Marshal Adishola Abusu, and 10 others. The commission is prosecuting Air Marshal Amusu and his co defendants for an alleged fraud, totaling 22.8 billion naira. The documents were tendered through an investigator with the EFCC, Mr. Tosin Owobo, led in evidence by the prosecutor, Mr. Rotimi Oyeripo. Mr. Owobo claimed that his team of investigators uncovered how funds were moved from the Nigerian Air Force Special Emergency Operation Account into the accounts of three companies. According to the witness, the investigators later discovered that one of the three companies, TM, uh, Timseg Investment Limited, was operated by one of the defendants, a former director of finance and budgets, Air Commodore Ulubenga Madibu. Justice Idris has adjourned till February 22nd for ruling on the admissibility of the documents and for continuation of the trial. Federal lawmakers in the Senate have launched an investigation into alleged irregularities into the approval of contracts by the Bureau for Public Procurement. The decision follows a motion moved by Senator Dino Melae alleging a contravention of the Public Procurement Act by awarding contracts to companies not recommended by the procuring entity. 
It's another day of proceedings at the upper legislative house. Besides continuation of debate on the 2017 appropriations, one of the motions raised on the floor of the Senate is an alleged irregularity in the approval of contracts by the Bureau of Public Procurement. According to the sponsor of the motion, the Senator Gina Milai, while Doe Project Limited was recommended for the rehabilitation of Numan Jalungo Roads for 11.7 billion naira, the BPP awarded the contract to Rockbridge Construction Limited at 12.8 billion naira and that while the Minister of Works recommended Don Macri's Global Resources Limited for the rehabilitation of Nenwe Nomwe Mburubu Nara Road project at 5 billion Naira, the BPP awarded it to Arab Contractors Nigeria Limited at 6.4 billion Naira. The BPP, in contravention of Public Procurement Act, went beyond its mandates to award the contract to companies not recommended by the procuring entity, for instance. The procuring entity recommended Dwes Project Limited for the rehabilitation of Newman Jalingo Road for 11.7 billion. The BPP awarded the contract to Rockbridge Construction Limited at 12.8 billion. There was contributions on that the motion. Taken into consideration. While some of the senators are asking that its committee and works be sensitive to timing so that the contract is not stalled, some argue that issues of technical expertise must also be considered when the probe of the matter commences. Whatever investigation we are doing should not prejudice the continued um, performance of that contract because if we, do, if we do, it means that by the time we get into the rainy season, these people will not be able to work again. There must be strict adherence to certain levels of uh, quality performance. Uh, from the list that I have seen in this motion, uh, the two first in companies appear to have a history of road building. The two that were initially recommended don't seem to have obvious um, records. Great the Senate concern, resolved that its Committee on Public Procurement here, should investigate the, the allegation the and present a report one, in four weeks. I want to look the task of law enforcement can only succeed with an aggregation of innovative work by each component of law enforcement in the country. That's according to the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who was speaking at the launch of a harmonized standard operation procedure on arrest, detention and prosecution of vessels and persons in Nigeria's maritime environment. It is not news that the Nigerian maritime environment is bedeviled by various security challenges ranging but not limited to oil theft, illegal and unregulated fishing, piracy, kidnapping and other criminal activities. It is for this reason that players in the maritime industry, security and law enforcement agencies gathered in Abuja. The Chief of Naval Staff explains the reason for the harmonized standards of operation procedures on arrest, detention and persecution of vessels and persons in Nigerian maritime environment. It became expedient to develop an instrument that would enhance synergy between the Nigerian Navy and other maritime law enforcement agencies in order to improve the present level of maritime law enforcement. It is in recognition of this that the idea of the harmonized standard operating procedures was muted. Vice President of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibaja, says the policy is not only a step in the right direction, but shows that a multi-sectoral effort is key to achieving results in law enforcement. This anticipatory initiative therefore clearly demonstrates that the maritime security community in Nigeria is committed to providing an enabling environment for legitimate maritime business to thrive in our maritime environment. There is no doubt that the task can only be done by an aggregation of the innovative work of each component of law enforcement. Done with the speeches, the policy is formally launched. The event over, it is hoped that the words at this event will march actions in the protection of Nigeria's maritime environment. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News.
In part two after the break, Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed debunks rumors over the president's health. Do stay with us.